Hello, this is Stuart Bradley, host of the Conspiracy Funhouse podcast and occasional contributor to the Debunking the Debunkers blogspot, and I'm issuing this video as an open challenge to the skeptical community in regards to 9-11. Specifically, I challenge the acceptance of the official NIST conclusions as opposed to the controlled demolition evidence being presented by AE 9-11 Truth. Indeed, the first part of this challenge that I hope you accept is to actually have the patience to watch this video and allow me the chance to briefly explain my arguments before you uh, close it and disregard my challenge. And uh, the reason I'm calling on skeptics specifically for this challenge is because skeptics by definition are supposed to reject blind faith and popular consensus. As a general rule, skeptics are supposed to apply the scientific method and demand to see empirical evidence of an idea or claim before they consider it to be a fact and are always on guard against pseudoscience and logical fallacies. Uh, currently, skeptical thinking is promoted through organizations such as the Center for Inquiry, the Skeptic Society, the James Randi Educational Foundation, and media sources like the Skeptics Magazine, uh, Skeptics Guide to the Universe, and the always entertaining Skeptically Yours podcast, which is one of my personal favorites. Uh, and I want to be clear here, because this video is not meant to attack skeptics, but rather I'm trying to reach out to skeptics who have closed their minds about 9-11, and refuse to honestly examine or discuss any new and uh, relevant evidence about 9-11. Um, this has been a source of frustration for me, because I do support the work of skeptics and totally agree with them on most topics, like evolution, ESP, uh, ghosts, UFOs, climate change, and so on. But on the topic of 9-11 research, I have found that the skeptical community in general exhibit an obvious emotional bias as they systematically dismiss any questions raised about the attack and vilify anyone who brings up these questions as delusional conspiracy theorists. And I do understand why many people are totally turned off to discussing 9-11, because over the years there has been a barrage of ridiculous claims being made from a variety of sources, everything from holographic planes to the use of mini-nukes or space beams, and most of these radical theories have been reasonably debunked. Um, but there is a common assumption being made here that because many claims have been proved wrong, that means that all claims are proved wrong, and it's just not so. Um, you know, whenever new evidence is being presented, it's being rejected even before taking the time to review and understand it. And that's, this is condemnation before examination, which is a very unskeptical practice. So when I try to ask my three basic 9-11 questions that I will present at the end of this video, I'm almost always mocked for bringing up the subject and told to refer to the National Institute of Standards and Technology, or NIST, as the expert authority on the matter. And for those of you who don't know, NIST is an agency of the U.S. Department of Commerce, mandated by the Bush administration in 2002 to study the collapse of the World Trade Center towers on 9-11. In 2005, NIST released their final report on the collapse of the World Trade Center towers, which addressed towers 1 and 2 concluding that the asymmetrical impact damage and hydrocarbon fires alone were responsible for the sudden and symmetrical gravity-driven collapse following the path of greatest resistance down through the towers at nearly freefall acceleration. Now, although NIST provided a computer simulation to back their pancake theory, it seemed unlikely to me that asymmetrical damage would cause a symmetrical collapse, especially without a significant structural resistance from the undamaged lower floors so I searched for NIST's exact calculations that explain this. NIST does not provide them. So I searched for a peer review of the NIST report, and there is none. It turns out that uh, NIST released a statement claiming that they were exempt from submitting the report to peer review because their work was, quote, not influential scientific information. Later, when NIST released the report on World Trade Center 7, they concluded that standard office fires alone were responsible for the sudden symmetrical collapse at an admitted freefall acceleration. Again, this released a computer simulation to demonstrate their theory, but refused to reveal the actual calculations that their computer simulation was based on, even denying a Freedom of Information Act request to do so. Of course, by this time, many critics had reviewed the, uh, reviewed the NIST reports and accused them of not following scientific method, of ignoring relevant evidence, of basing their conclusions on unfounded speculation, and of tweaking their computer models. And the, uh, critics have repeatedly challenged NIST officials to publicly discuss and clarify the pancake theory, but NIST continues to avoid to, uh, publicly debating the merits of their own report. Now, to me, this was very disturbing, that skeptical leaders would be endorsing a report that cannot be reviewed and verified. Why is it that skeptics, whose entire credo is to challenge faith-based beliefs, 
have so eagerly accepted on faith alone that the NIST conclusions are correct. Uh, to me, that's not skepticism. That is science by consensus and argument by authority. And to further highlight this hypocrisy, for, for years, 9-11 researchers have been told that any scientific evidence they present must be peer-reviewed in order to be taken seriously at all. But if peer review is the standard for credibility, then why don't they demand a peer review from NIST? Despite this obviously unfair peer review standard, 9-11 Truth researchers have worked to obtain this standard of evidence, which has taken years because there was not only no organized funding for such research, but there are very few people qualified to do this work who dare to risk their reputations by publicly challenging the official NIST explanation. Yet, in April of 2009, a peer-reviewed scientific paper was published in Bentham's Open Chemical Physics Journal entitled Active Thermitic Material Discovered in the Dusts from the World Trade Center, uh, Center Catastrophe. Now, this study was conducted by a group of nine certified scientists led by Dr. Niels Herrett, who is a senior member of the Nanoscience Center at the University of Copenhagen and has published nearly 60, 60 papers in the world's leading chemistry journals. Uh, simply saying that this guy has has scientific credibility. Uh, this team examined various dust samples from the World Trade Center and found an abundance of a mysterious red-grade chip. And a, for a further analysis, uh, these chips were identified as nanothermite, which is a high-tech high form of explosive, the property properties of which could explain some of the unusual collapse characteristics of the Twin Towers on 9-11. So, of course, this paper was extremely controversial, because it, it uh, directly contradicted NIST's official position that there were no explosives in the World Trade Center, although NIST admitted that they did no forensics testing for explosive residues in spite of the NFPA 921 Guide for Fire and Explosive Investigation. So this peer-reviewed nanothermite paper was presented, but instead of the skeptical community reviewing and discussing the scientific merits of the paper, they have instead tried to move the goalpost and devise reasons not to accept the paper. As I discuss in this rebuttal video, first they attack the publisher, claiming Bentham didn't do a proper peer review. Then they attack the dust sample submitted, uh, saying that they didn't follow a chain of custody. And then they attack everyone involved with the study, contending that any scientist who would participate in or endorse this paper is a delusional conspiracy theorist. And this seems to be the standard for credibility in the skeptical community. Regardless of a person's education and professional experience in science, the moment uh, anyone questions 9-11, they lose all credibility. Which unfortunately seems to be the current skeptical opinion about architects and engineers for 9-11 Truth, who are a group of now over 2,000 certified building professionals who, re who reject NIST's conclusions and have signed a petition calling for a new investigation into the World Trade Center collapse. And unlike NIST, AE 9-11 invites questions from skeptics and openly shares its scientific papers on their website. They even have a presentation called 9-11 Blueprint for Truth, where Richard Gage applies the scientific method to clearly explain how the controlled demolition hypothesis better fits the physical evidence than NIST's conclusions. Now, it is a two-hour presentation that goes into great detail, but I, re I recommend this video for anyone who honestly wants to understand the genuine arguments being made for a new investigation. I certainly hope you will take the time to review the material and hopefully you will realize that AE 9-11 Truth is not the lunatic fringe group that the popular media portrays all 9-11 Truth activists to be. Uh, personally, I think that skeptics and AE 9-11 Truth members would make natural allies, seeing uh, that we have a common goal of using science to discern fact from fiction. So here's my challenge to both skeptical leaders and to people who consider themselves to be critical thinkers. And I'm looking for the answers to three specific questions. Question 1. Although NIST's position is that there was no molten steel, several sources, including Appendix C of the FEMA report, document steel girders from the World Trade Center towers that had melted from an extremely high heat source reaction, much greater than that possible by jet-fueled office fires. So what melted this World Trade Center steel? Question 2. NIST claims that normal office fires caused the World Trade Center 7 to collapse, Yet NIST admits that Tower 7 dropped in a freefall with zero structural resistance to gravity for eight stories, only possible if all support columns fail simultaneously. So how is it possible for all 82 support columns of World Trade Center 7 to fail simultaneously from naturally burning office fires alone? And question 3. Many debunkers refer to a study by Dr. James Millett, insisting that the energetic red-grade chips discussed in the Herrett nanothermite paper 
are simply paint and not reactive. But this conclusion is debunked here in this video by Mark Bastille and Dr. Niels Herod himself, who questioned why Millet only heated his samples to 400 degrees Celsius instead of 430 degrees, which is the reaction temperature reported by the Herod paper. If these chips are indeed only paint, as the debunkers claim, then how do you explain the energetic reactions documented in this video? And that's it. That's my challenge. Just answer those three questions. And as fellow skeptics, I'm sure that your answers will be backed by verifiable scientific sources. And I'll be uh, producing more videos discussing the responses that I get. Now, it's very possible that you will eventually realize that these questions can't be answered without a further, more intensive investigation which is exactly what the 9-11 Truth Movement is calling for. We aren't saying we know what happened. We're saying that we don't know what happened, and we should know what happened considering how important 9-11 was. I mean, this, this event has changed our world, and not necessarily for the better. Um, and there's a common misconception that the 9-11 Truth members are paranoid doom and gloom advocates trying to spread distrust in government because it gives us some sort of uh, thrill or satisfaction. And my, my reply is that there is already a massive and spreading distrust in our government between uh, unjustified wars, the unconstitutional spying on citizens, the influence of corporate money on the political system and our justice system, and so on. I mean, to most people, our nation seems to be on a steady decline. And I'm suggesting that 9-11 Truth is the first step in stopping the steady decline and restoring people's faith in government by holding those responsible for deceiving and harming our nation to account. To me, it, it just makes sense. And one final point to skeptics and debunkers. There is a reason why the 9-11 Truth Movement continues to grow instead of decline. Consider that most truthers started out like you, uh, believing wholeheartedly in the official story, until they found something. They found some fact or evidence that did not concur with the official account. And they had to choose whether to ask questions about 9-11 and risk being publicly attacked as a truther, or to just continue to ignore the facts and going on uh, believing the fearful illusions and allowing the unjust practices brought to us by 9-11. Um, it's not an easy choice. But I hope that when you do eventually find that one piece of evidence that you can't honestly explain away, that you will have the courage and integrity to join the movement for truth because we will welcome you. Thank you so much for your attention, and best wishes to all.